Arrays are a fundamental concept in JavaScript that you're going to use throughout your entire JavaScript life. Okay, so let's now learn exactly how they work. So in many previous lectures, we had different variables for different persons. But now imagine how handy it would be to bundle them all into one single variable. And in JavaScript, we have arrays for that. They're like collections of variables that can even have different data types. Okay. So let's declare a variable, like always, called names. And now we can use an array. And there are different ways of creating a new array, but the easiest and most used one is using brackets. So we use the brackets, and then in here we put our different values. So let's say we want an array of names. So John, then comma, and then we add a new element. So Mark, and then let's say a third element called Jane. All right, so now we have an array of names, an array with three elements called John, Mark, and Jane, all separated by these commas. Okay, so let's create a new one called years. And as I mentioned, there are different ways of creating arrays. So let's see another one, which is new array. So you can do an array like this, basically calling this array function here with the new keyword, and then in there you pass the data that you want to be in the array. So 1990, 1969, and 1948. All right, so this will be an array the same, but again, this here is far more used, and so you will usually not use this one, okay? I just wanted to let you know that it also exists. Now, we say that arrays are zero-based, which means that the first element is element number zero, the second one is element number one, number two, and so forth and so on. Okay, so let's now see how we can actually access elements in an array. So we're going to log to the console names, and then we use the brackets again, and then the index, so the number. Okay, and so names brackets zero will be the element zero of the names array. And remember that arrays are zero based, and so John is the element zero. So let's take a look at that. And indeed, we see John. Of course, we could also log the entire array. So this is how it's going to look like. So we have here we say the number three, which is the amount of elements in the array, and then the entire array. And actually, we can also access this number here. And all we have to do in order to do that is to say names dot length. Okay, so we will learn later what this dot here means. But for now, just know that we can do names dot length, and then that will show us how many elements are in there. In this case, it just returned undefined, but that is just because I misspelled length. Okay, so that's what it should look like, and now we should get the number three. So we have three elements in our array. Okay, so we access number zero, we can also access number two, for example, and that should be then Jane. Okay, so this is how we retrieve basically data from the array, but we can also use the syntax to uh, mutate the data in the array. Okay, so we can say names and one, which will be Mark, and then we can say that we want it to be Ben instead of Mark. Okay, and so if we now log the array, then we should see that it's different. And so now it is actually on position number one, it is Ben and no longer Mark. Okay. We can also add data to the array. So we can actually access a position that's not even there. So let's say we want position five to be Mary. So let's see what happens then. And actually let's put it here before this console.log. And so you see that now we have empty here and then only then comes Mary. Now if we wanted to add the Mary as the last element in the array, we could use this property that we used before, so names.length. So remember that this is three at this point, if we say names, names.length, and this will then be three, and so names three should be Mary. And so then it adds this as the last element in the array, basically. Okay, makes sense? So first, well, let me actually edit here. So muted array data. Here we can say initialize new array. 
okay? So first here we mutated the array on position number one and added Ben. Then here we mutate the array at position number names.length and that is three at this point, okay? And so at names position number three, we will add Mary. And so position number three will be the last one. So zero, one, two, and then three is the new one, okay? So I hope that you start to see how useful arrays can be by holding this different data all in one variable. And of course, this can also be different data types. So let's say that we want to have all the information about John all in one uh, variable, okay? Let's give us one, some more space here. And then let's say var John. And now we can put the first name, we can put the last name, we can put the date of birth, we can put the job, and we can put that he is uh, single or that he's not married. So let's say uh, false. Okay, so now we have different data type all in one data structure, which is this array, all right? So these are the very, very basics of arrays, but let's make it a bit better even, because there are a couple of functions that we can basically apply to arrays. And these functions are called methods that are specific to arrays. And you will learn all about methods and why they are called methods in this case in the next couple of lectures, all right? For now, just know that we can do something like, like this. So we have our John variable, and then we can say dot push, and then this is like a regular function. And the push function or the push method, what it will do is that it will add an element at the end of the array. So let's say that John's favorite color is blue. And so if we pass in blue now here, it will then add that element to the end of the array. All right, so console.log. John, and so let's see how that worked. And so indeed, we have now the array that we declared initially, plus the blue element at the end of the array. So that's what the push method, the push function here did to the John array, all right? So don't worry about this dot syntax here and this, uh, this, this function, this way we call this push function. We will learn about why it works this way in a couple of lectures. So there are a couple of methods that I want to show you now because push is not the only one there are tons of different methods for arrays. And I will just show you a couple of them now. So we can also use John unshift. And what unshift will do is very similar to push, but instead of adding to the end of the array, it will add it to the beginning. So let's say that we want to add a title. So Mr. So that it's Mr. John Smith. And so now we have the first element, the Mr. and then the rest, as we've seen uh, in the previous steps. So these two methods here, they add elements to the array. Let's now see two methods that remove them. So John dot pop. And what this will do is that it removes the element from the end. All right, so let's now then log it to the console again. And so now you see that we have the array from before, but without the blue element. And if we do it again, then it will remove yet another from the end. And so now we should also lose the false. So let's take a look at that. And indeed, it did now remove these two, okay? And so finally, we also have a method, of course, to remove the first element. And that one is called shift, okay? And so now we should lose the mister here. And yeah, indeed, it's gone. Okay, so push and shift, pop and shift methods. And now just one last that I want to show you, which is the index of. All right, so let me show that to you. So index of will return the position of the argument that we pass in inside of this array. So let's say that we want to know the position of the 1990. So we pass in this value and index of will then return in which position this 1990 appears in the John array. So let's lock that to the console so we can take a look at it. And so what do you think it will be? So take a guess, and now let's see. And it is number two, and indeed it is. So zero, one, and two, okay? So it returns the position at which the element is in the array, if it is in the array, and if that element is actually not present in the array, it will return minus one. So let's say that we pass in something else, 
let's say 23, and so now it should return minus 1. And indeed it does, because we don't have any 23 in that array. And so one of the things that this method here is most useful for is to actually test if an element is in the array or not. So let me show that to you. And so let's use the ternary operator that we learned about before. So John dot index of, and so now let's test if John is a designer. So we ask the position of the designer element in the array. So that will return a number to us. And then we say, if it's equal to minus one, well, then John is not a designer. And else, John is a designer. All right. So let's check that out. And nothing happens, of course, because we didn't assign this here to any variable. So let's say var is designer. And then we can log it to the console. Okay, so John is not a designer. So let's see why that happened. So we searched for designer in the array, but that element is not actually in that array. And so it will return minus one. So this entire part here will be minus one. And so we test, is minus one equal to minus one? And yeah, indeed it is. And so the is designer variable will be assigned the John is not a designer string. Okay, so let's say we now change it to designer. And so now we should see that John is a designer because it will now actually uh, return this index. Let's try that out in the console. So index of, and you see that it is three. All right, so zero, one, two, and three. And so three is of course different uh, than minus one. And so we now have John is a designer. Okay, so these are just a couple of uh, methods on arrays. And I'm gonna show you many, many, many more throughout the rest of the course. But for now, you know how arrays work and that's amazing. It's a really powerful data structure that we can use in JavaScript. And so now I think that you learned enough already to take on another coding challenge. So let's do that right in the next video.